Hello friends. So in today's video, we are going to discuss about the third TDS equation. In previous two videos, I've already discussed the first and second TDS equation and their application. Today, I'm going to discuss the third TDS equation, the derivation of that and its application. So let's get started. In the previous videos, I've already discussed that the entropy of a pure substance or any substance can be written as a function of uh, P and V. In fact, it can be written as a function of any two variables out of these three, P, V, P, V, T. So to derive the third TDS equation, we'll consider entropy to be a function of P and V. If to derive the first TDS equation, we consider the entropy to be the function of V and T. And uh, to reach to the second TDS equation, we consider the entropy to be the function of P and T. While for the third TDS equation, we are going to consider the entropy to be the function of P and V. So if it is so, so I can represent my DS as uh, del s over because s is a function of p and v now so i can represent del s over del p at constant v dp plus del s over del v at constant p dv okay so let me put this as equation number one and let me multiply the equation one by t so i get tds is equal to t of T times del s by del v, del s by del p at constant v dp plus t times del s by del v at constant p dv. Okay, so this is equation number two. Now uh, we know uh, from the previous discussion also in the uh, last two videos I've discussed it that it, uh, since dq is equal to t ds by second law of thermodynamics, and dq is also equal to mu c v dt. All right, where CV here is the specific heat at constant volume and mu is the number of mole. But in terms of heat capacity, this mu times CV can be written as capital CV, which is the heat capacity. And that can be written as uh, T del S by del T at constant volume for this equation. Okay, and we also know that uh, dq is equal to tds of second law of thermodynamics and dq can also be written as mu times cp times dt equal to tds where this cp is the specific heat at constant pressure right and mu is the number of moles if i write down this mu times cp as capital cp which is the heat capacity at constant pressure earlier it was at constant volume so that is nothing but T times del S over del T at constant P. Okay, so I'm going to use these two results in equation two. Okay, so now um, if I go back to my equation two and uh, do a little bit of mathematics over there. So my equation two was T ds T del S over del P. Now if I multiply and divide by del T, I can write down this thing as del T by del P dp plus this term I have multiplied and divided by del, del T inside the bracket and then separated it out. Similarly, if I can multiply it by uh, the del T and divide by del T and but then separate it out, it, this bracket as this. Now, what's the benefit of doing this exercise? The benefit of doing this exercise is that I can clearly see uh, that T times del S by del T at constant V form equation three is nothing but CV. This guy is nothing but CV here. And uh, this guy is nothing but CV here. And this guy here is nothing but, if I look carefully, T times del S by del T at constant P form equation four is nothing but CP. So in terms of CV and CP, I can write down CV del T by del P at constant V dP plus CP del t by del v at constant p dv okay so uh, that's equal to tds so this is this particular equation that we have just obtained tds is equal to cv times del t by del p at constant v dp plus cp del t by del v at constant p dp is known as third tds equation this is a third tds equation so we have already reached to third tds equation let me put that equation five Okay, so now uh, but there is an, another very interesting form of equation five that can be written by utilizing the definition of isothermal compressibility 
and the coefficient of volume expansion that is the volume expansivity beta which i discussed in the previous video also uh, so uh, let me write down uh, uh, first of all uh, the definition of beta and um, the kappa which is isothermal compressibility so beta which is the uh, volume expansivity volume expansivity that is defined as 1 over v del v by del t at constant p and kappa which is known as the isothermal compressibility isothermal compressibility is equal to minus 1 over v del v by del p at constant t so with the definitions of beta and kappa i can write down the equation four five in terms of uh, uh, beta kappa and cvcp etc okay so let's see how can uh, we write down that if i calculate the ratio of beta and kappa that turns out to be del p by del t at constant v okay uh, in case uh, if you are not familiar with this so let me do a little bit of exercise for you uh, that how to obtain that uh, this relation okay so in thermodynamics it's um, important uh, to derive this uh, relation which i'm going to write down here but in case you have not done the derivation you can, you can go to uh, the standard textbook and revise it the, there is a standard result uh, that del p by del t at constant v is times del t by del v at constant p times del v by del p at constant t is nothing but minus one so if you look carefully uh, from this relation that uh, this thing here can be written in terms of beta and this thing here can be written in terms of kappa because you remember the definition of beta and kappa you can see that uh, beta was 1 over v del v by del t at constant p and kappa was uh, minus 1 over v del v by del p at constant t so if i see carefully this particular term here can be written as uh, beta v uh, 1 over beta v rather 1 over beta v and this term here can be written as in terms of uh, kappa and that's equal to minus kappa v so if i use these two results here so i can show the del p by del t at constant v times beta uh, v inverse times minus kappa v is equal to minus one which means that del p by del t at constant v is equal to uh, beta by k beta by kappa so that exactly we have written here okay so uh, if we know this ratio i can read out rewrite down my equation five in using this definition of beta v and the ratio uh, so what was my equation five my equation five was this Okay, so now I want to use all these results that we have just discussed. So if you look carefully, this thing is del T by del P at constant V, which is nothing but kappa by beta. From, let me number this as six, number six. So from six, I can write down this del T by del P at constant V as uh, kappa by beta. And this is DP here plus CP and del T by del V at constant P uh, if I multiply and divide by V, so I can actually write down CP upon V, V times del T by del V uh, times P dV. So this is nothing but again, uh, this term here is nothing but again, 1 over beta. So this is CV kappa over beta dP plus CP by beta V dV. Okay, so that's what we uh, get as a new form of TDS equation, third TDS equation, right? Uh, in terms of the beta, kappa, CP, CV, etc. Uh, all right, so as far as the application of this third TDS equation is concerned, the uh, uh, equation can be used in many um, uh, cases, in many applications. Uh, for example, if one has to calculate the pressure needed to decrease the volume of a substance uh, diabetically uh, from a given value to the another value, so that can be cal calculated using this equation. So the pressure needed, 
pressure needed to calculate the decrease in volume of a substance in an adiabatic process. So let me number this. This is equation number seven, let's say, the final form that we have got. And for an adiabatic process, dq is equal to tds is equal to zero. So from seven, we can write that uh, cv kappa beta dp is negative of cp upon beta dv. So what we'll get is cv kappa dp is equal to minus cp over v dv if we know this cp cv uh, and kappa we can find out the pressure needed to decrease uh, the volume from a given value to the other value for using this equation so hope you understood it uh, the application and the derivation of the third tds equation thank you so much